Hello and welcome back to the Tin Barn. I'm Pragmatic Lee and in today's video we're going to do a little bit of forging. Uh, I realize my uh, forging videos get probably less than half the number of views that machining videos do, but in the couple of the previous videos I showed making the molds uh, and dies to crimp these or to, to form these pieces of sheet metal and these I mentioned in the in those videos that these would be used to make candle holders and several comments uh, had quite a few comments indicating they would like to see the process of making the candle holders these are the type of candle holders I'm talking about these are uh, just little sticks of course this or stick candle holders this is this cup at the bottom of it a finger ring and then the holder for the candle itself. So we're going to do a quick video today of making two of those. I make these in pairs. Uh, I'm going to swing the camera around to the uh, workbench here and show you how we get started laying out uh, to press one of these pieces. I th buy these pieces of uh, uh, sheet metal. They're uh, 16 gauge, about 60 thousandths. I buy them already pre-cut. Uh, get them on uh, eBay. So I'm going to use my center square and just a couple lines and I'll put a third one in just or look at a third one just to double check it uh, intersects at the same place and it does. These have been pretty good about being round. I'm not sure how they're cut or they're bound to be stamped out. I'll just take my center punch and in just a moment I'm going to step over to the drill and I'll drill a five millimeter hole in this. I won't try to video that but I'm going to drill a five millimeter hole in it and then carry over to the press where we'll uh, stamp it into this form. The stem portion of the candle holder uh, will be made out of a piece of three-quarter inch pipe. This is uh, this is actually not plumbing pipe. This is uh, <clears throat> structural pipe. But this is a six and a half inch piece. And I've also put a mark on there where the center is. We're going to make two of these stems at one time. So they'll be made out of this three-quarter inch uh, structural steel pipe. You can use plumbing pipe. Uh, I would use the black pipe though and not the galvanized just simply because of galvanized fumes. The finger ring will may, be made out of this piece of quarter inch uh, uh, round stock. If you notice the color green, this is actually salvaged uh, from some uh, reefs off a of grave, my mother's grave. She passed away back in June and when I went to clean off, clean off the grave, I saved all the uh, frames, uh, reef frames, and uh, they're made out of this quarter inch round stock. So that's what we'll use to make the finger rings. So I'll meet you over at the press and we'll form this into this. I'm over here at the press now, I've got the whole five millimeter hole drilled in this piece. And as I explained in the previous videos, on when I made this, uh, set up this mold and made the dies. The reason five millimeter is this hole is going to stretch uh, to just a little over a quarter inch, which is what we want. It'll stretch during the mold process. If you've not seen the video on these, uh, I'll try to put a link to, to them, a card up in the upper right hand corner. Uh, check that out uh, when you get a chance. Set that over.
and there we have our formed uh, cut. So I'm going out to the uh, to set the camera up at the forge. We'll get set up out there, and I'll probably make the finger ring first. All right, like I say, we're going to make the finger ring first. Uh, I've got it in the kiln now, or in the uh, forge. I'm just going to kind of taper off this end just a little bit. Okay, up here in the vise, I've got a, just a couple of uh, uh, round pieces welded onto some angle iron, and I'll set those up to use as a bending jig. Okay, so now I've got a finger ring formed. I'm gonna go ahead off camera and as I say, I'll do these in pairs. I'm gonna make another one of these. Then we'll come back and start working on the uh, upright, uh, on the, the pipe that actually holds the candles. Okay, I'm getting ready to start on the pipe now. And to form it, I'm gonna use this fullering tool, which is just a simple device built here in the shop. But what I'm gonna do first is use the horn on the anvil to thin out these ends. I'll thin out both ends. Then I'll back off the horn just a little bit and use the ball peen hammer up in this area to kind of flare it out a little bit. Once we've got the ends fixed, I will come back and put a neck I'll neck this down all the way in the center. Then I'll move over about the width of the pipe, pipe and put another neck on this side of center and one on this side of center. I'll probably not do much narration during this process uh, as it's pretty much self-explanatory.
now that we've got the uh, the collar or neck started, we can go to a to a BFH. Alright, as you can hear now, the fullering tool is bottoming out, which is what I want. So we've got a full neck on there, and when that is cut in half, the hole that's left in the center of it will be just right to drill and tap for a quarter twenty. Now I'm going to heat and move over about the width of the, the pipe and put two more uh, collars in, necks in. Go back to the smaller hammer though when we get ready to do that. Alright, I'm going to continue this process on both ends until I've got two more of the uh, uh, necks put in there. Okay, I've got all three of the uh, necks formed in there now. Probably what I'm going to do, I'll move the fuller. And if there's any crooks in here, I'll just take a smaller hand hammer and try to work a few of them out. Some of that I can do cold if necessary. But I'm going to let this cool down. Then we're going to go in there to the uh, inside the tin barn to the wire wheel and get these cleaned up. Before I uh, start wire brushing these, I'm going to grind this tab down that I put on the finger pieces. That's The tab's a whole lot bigger than what's necessary. Uh, these are going to be welded onto the bottom of the cups. So I'm just going to, on the tube of 72, just uh, grind them down a little bit. All right, now we're just going to take the wire brush on the buffer and clean this up a little bit. Okay, all the scale is off now, cleaned up very nicely. Of course, that's going to flash rust very quickly if I don't put a clear coat on it. So let's move on now and get the uh, uh, finger rings attached to the cups. All right, I'm going to weld this thumb piece onto the uh, cup uh, to both of them. Once we got that done, we're going back out to the forge, and I'll heat this whole section right here up uh, red hot so that I can easily bend the finger ring and get it all in line uh, like it should be. A little anti-spatter on the table device. <laughs>
All right, now we're going to go back out to the forge. I'm going to heat these red hot, uh, straighten them out a little bit, and then we're going to quench them, and I'll explain that when we get out there. Back out here at the forge now, what I'm going to do after I light it up is place each one of these. They're still a bit warm from the welding. I'm going to place it in there and then use two sets of pliers and any straightening necessary to, uh, to get the finger ring in line, I'll do that. Then I'll heat it back up again and immediately drop it in the quench bucket down here. Yeah, I know it's a plastic bucket, but it'll be okay. Now what that quenching will do, I'm not doing that to try to harden the piece by any means. All I'm doing that for is to give this some patina. We've got this sheet metal here uh, where everything else has got a nice forged look to it. We want this uh, to look pretty much the same way. And I want this to get hot enough now uh, to turn the handle red as well because that's what I need. The finger ring is what I need to adjust. Now we're going to get the whole thing red hot and immediately drop it in the quench. What this is doing is causing a, a little bit of scale to pop up on these uh, on this bare sheet metal. Now, let me quickly give you, a, uh, give you a quick look at the difference in the two pieces. If I can get it over here where you can see it. This is the one we just quenched. See how it has that distressed look now? Of course, we're gonna polish it up on the wire wheel versus the plain Jane sheet metal. That also removed the darkening that had been up here from the uh, from getting hot in the whale process. All right, I'm going to carry these back into the wire wheel, uh, clean them up, polish them up again. I won't try to video that because it's pretty much the same process, and use the uh, a uh, little wire wheel and a drill to clean the finger rings up as well. Then we'll meet back at the workbench and start assembling the uh, candle holders. All right, before we put everything together, we got to uh, part these two pieces. So I'm over here at the vertical bandsaw now, and I'm just going to slice this through the middle. I've got a couple of props for each end. Since the ends are fl flared out, it would it would bind just before it uh, broke through. All right, I'm going to carry these back in there to the sander right quick and just knock off that rough saw edge. Then we'll go back to the workbench and put them together. When I first started uh, messing with the forging and blacksmithing a little bit, uh, one thing, one of the things that caused me a little bit of anxiety to begin with was that no matter how hard I tried, measured and whatever, things didn't necessarily come out to be the same size. One of these is just a little longer than the other. Some of that has to do with uh, where I made that cut. Others of it has to do with just how much the material stretched. 
uh, in making this neck through here or in uh, bailing out the end. And also, finger rings didn't always come out to be the same size, exact same shape. I'm very new at this uh, uh, blacksmith and stuff. But what I do with these candle holders, uh, I sell them individually. But then I will pair them up with a candle snuffer. And this snuffer is really no different than the first joint in the candle holder with a little clevis in the end. Another piece of that quarter inch rod and using a, uh, I think it's a number eight finish nail as a rivet to put them together. But what I'll do is put these out as individual candle holders. And if somebody wants to pair them up, I'll let them pick through the selection, find two that they think that's the closest match and let it be their call. So. I don't get stressed out over it anymore. What I'm going to do now is put one of these in, drill with the quarter 20 uh, tap drill, and then tap that out. Alright, now I think we're ready for a final assembly. Put in the quarter, quarter 20 through, quarter 20 screw through this dimple. And we'll put a little thread lock on. By the way, these are soft jaws in this vise. And another thing that used to stress me a little bit too was that when it got, all got put together, if it didn't set, out, set perfectly uh, plumb. But I found just a, a little friendly persuasion will handle that with no issue whatsoever. Okay, one more thing we need to do before we're going to call these finish. But before I do that, I'm going to carry these outside and put a, a uh, coat of this Rust-Oleum uh, Crystal Clear Enamel. It just gives them a protective finish. I do use a glossy for this, but that will stop any flash rust, uh, hopefully for the life of the holders. Then we'll come back and do the final step. All right, I think these turned out pretty good. Uh, as you can see by putting them in the uh, uh, fire and then quenching them, gives them a good patina. Uh, you can, the weld blends right in, inside and outside. But as I say, we've got one more final touch. I'm guessing a true blacksmith would have a die or a, or a punch to put their uh, touch mark on their work. But since I don't have that yet, I'm going to use one of my little tool stickers. And before you ask, the stickers are not quite big enough to cover the hole and have any uh, have any contact surface. But there you go. And a few other cousins as well.
There's four pair. I got two more pair in the works. Hope you've enjoyed this uh, little forging video. Take care, and I'll see you on the next one. Thank you.